Good morning. Good morning, everybody. My topic is increasing. Good morning, everybody. My topic is increase in hematocrit with SGLT2 inhibitors. Is it hemoconcentration from diuresis or increased erythropoiesis after amelioration of hypoxia? First of all, my conflict of interest disclosures are here. We all know about the cardiorenal benefits of the SGLT2 inhibitors. SGLT2 inhibitors are the only diabetes drugs with proven benefits to decrease hospitalization for heart failure across the spectrum of heart failure in patients with and without diabetes. SGLT2 inhibitors are also the only diabetes drugs with proven benefits to decrease progression to end-stage kidney disease, dialysis, or kidney transplantation, again, in patients with and without diabetes, and we can use them with an EGFR more than 20. Many metabolic, hemodynamic, neurohormonal, and molecular mechanisms have been postulated to contribute to these cardiorenal benefits. Nobody knows. In February 2018, the authors of the Empiric study, they published this saying, how does empagliflozin reduce cardiovascular mortality? And they did a mediation analysis. In the conclusions, they said, in this exploratory analysis from Empereg, changes in markers of plasma volume were the most important mediators of the reduction in CV death with EMPA. Now, lots of publications said, ha, ah, this increase in hematocrit is because of hemoconcentration, a dehydration effect due to the mild diuretic effect of the SGLT2 inhibitors. But you have to remember, an increase in hematocrit can also be due to increased red cell production. Why and how does an increase in red cell production occur? Well, for that, you need erythropoietin secretion by the kidney in response to hy hypoxia. That leads to an increase in RBC production. Related to hypoxia, and just after Emperor, our group published this hypothesis in diabetes care saying, can a shift in fuel energetics explain the beneficial cardiorenal outcomes in Emperor? And we called it a unifying hypothesis. We said the cardiorenal benefits of EMPA are due to a shift in myocardial and real fuel metabolism away from fat and glucose oxidation, which are energy inefficient in the setting of the diabetic heart and kidney towards an energy efficient super fuel like ketone bodies, which improves myocardial and renal work efficiency and function. Now, when the diabetic heart and kidney become energy inefficient, what happens? Well, that leads to hypoxia because they're consuming more oxygen to produce energy for, uh, to produce ATP for energy. In response to hypoxia, more erythropoietin, the kidney becomes hypoxic. So there's more erythropoietin made by the kidney to stimulate the bone marrow to produce more RBCs. That leads to an increase in RBC count, increased oxygen carrying capacity, and an increase in RBC count also results in an increase in hematocrit. And that led to our publication of this review article in Diabetes and Metabolic Syndrome, whether the increase in hematocrit is hemoconcentration or increased erythropoiesis. So this is now figure. In the normal kidney, whenever the erythropoietin-producing cells in the renal cortex, mainly juxtamedullary region and outer medulla, they are the peritubular fibroblasts. Whenever there is any hypoxia for any reason, the kidneys get hypoxic. That leads to an increase in erythropoietin production. And that, of course, leads to maintenance of optimal hemoglobin and hematocrit because there's hypoxia, erythropoietin goes up, and you get norm, restoration of normal oxygen carrying capacity. In CKD, diabetic or not, there is a chronic hypoxic insult due to repeated oxidative stress to the proximal renal tubules. And these fibroblasts, which make erythropoietin, they get converted to 
defunct myofibroblasts and they lose the ability to secrete erythropoietin. So you get less erythropoietin, hemoglobin hematocrit goes down and then there is decreased oxygen carrying capacity and decreased tissue perfusion and your heart failure, kidney failure get worse. Now, when you put the person on SULT2 inhibitors, what do they do? They improve fuel energetics according to our hypothesis and that ameliorates renal tissue hypoxia. How does that occur? SGLT2 inhibitors block the excessive re reabsorption of sodium and glucose in the proximal tubules. As you know, it is there taking place. It consumes a lot of energy. In addition, SGLT2 inhibitors produce low-grade hyperketonemia, about twice baseline, both diabetics and non-diabetics. This, of course, leads to a shift from glucose and fat to a more energy efficient fuel, ketone bodies. That relieves the hypoxia. The hypoxic kidney now is better perfused. The myofibroblasts get reconverted to erythropoietin producing fibroblasts. Erythropoietin goes up. Hemoglobin goes up about two percentage points, 41 to 43. Not small, but it leads to an increase in oxygen carrying capacity and increase in cardiorenal tissue perfusion. And that improves both your heart and your kidney function. Just uh, online, it has been published. It will come in Di Diabetologia in May, where these authors from Denmark published this article. And the hypothesis was to emper and semaglutide or the combination protect the kidney by improving kidney oxygenation. What did they find? On the contrary, empagliflozin induced a reduction in, uh, in medullary kidney oxygenation. So they said the kidney medulla becomes more hypoxic. Semaglutide, on the other hand, reduced kidney perfusion, but oxygenation was maintained. And in addition, they also showed that empagliflozin increased erythropoietin and hematocrit, which was a that we know. So the hype authors hypothesized that physiological hypoxia generated by empagliflozin stimulates erythropoietin synthesis, which could mediate kidney protection. So they prove that empagliflozin actually worsens kidney, uh, renal medullary hypoxia. That leads to the stimulus and it goes up. And this supports our group's fuel energetics hypothesis. And we are, of course, hypothesis updated our hypothesis in September 2021, and we said, in addition to serving as a super fuel, ketones are potentially able to ameliorate the pro-inflammatory hypoxic milieu in patients with kidney and heart failure, independent of hypoglycemia. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope I've convinced you that the hematocrit increase with SGLT2 inhibitors is amelioration of hypoxia and not dehydration. Thank you so much for your attention.